Hi everybody, Nick from F-Zero Camera here, and this video is gonna be all about assembling the main F-Zero Camera parts and how I put them together on my C-Beam linear rail. You can use really any system of linear movement that you can imagine. I'll show you how I did it for the prototype and the pros and cons of doing it that way. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take our main gantry plate, and onto that we are going to mount the rail clamp mounting plate, the camera mounting plate, one lens carrier, and our intermediate sensor assembly. Now this has already been assembled. I have made a video for how to assemble the intermediate sensor, so I'm not gonna go into that right now. Let's start here with the main gantry plate. We're gonna take the side that has more rows of holes on it. That's gonna be where we mount the rail mounting plate. These low head screws have a three millimeter wrench head. So you want to be careful not to over torque and strip them. Be gentle. To ensure you don't strip your screws, make sure you're pushing in as you screw and make sure you don't over torque. Okay, that one's on. Next, we're going to put the lens carrier on and we want the bellows clips facing inward toward where the intermediate sensor is going to be. Again, make sure not to strip anything. Be careful. Okay. So there we've got our lens carrier and rail clamp mounting plate on the gantry. Cool. Next up, we are gonna mount the intermediate sensor onto the gantry plate. Technically, this can be mounted in either direction, but I tend to mount it with this side facing out and this side with the compression plate facing in. Again, it doesn't really matter, but that's how I tend to do it. Okay, this plate just has an 80 millimeter circle so that you can snug your lens up against it or a matte box um, or depending on what you're going to use for your taking camera. Uh, you may want a step up ring or a lens hood or whatever just to press against this and make it light tight. We'll screw this in with just yet again some more quarter 20 screws. Okay. So there's the camera side plate on. And you know what, we might as well go ahead and put on the camera plate. We can always adjust it later. So I'm gonna go this way. You can go this way if you have a very tiny camera, but most cameras, you should use it in this orientation and you'll be able to get all the height and distance adjustment you need to make sure everything is nice and centered. So the kit comes with some slightly shorter quarter 20s and some slightly longer quarter 20s. We're gonna use the longer ones in this case to make sure they reach all the way through and get nice and deep into those threads. You definitely want four screws attaching the camera plate onto the rail plate. Okay, there we go. So there is our finished gantry subassembly. It's got the intermediate sensor, the gantry plate, lens carrier, camera plate, rail clamp, camera plate. All done, looking beautiful. All right, next up is gonna be our objective side. So this lens carrier is identical to the one on the taking camera side. It's just that instead of the taking camera plate, we're going to mount our lens. Now the F0 camera comes with this lens, which will make an effective 67 millimeter F0.6, but you can use any large format lens that will cover eight by 10. And as long as you have a board that you can screw onto this plate or drill holes such that you can screw them onto this plate, it will work with the system. So again, we just need to screw this all together. Okay, and now this is our objective side subassembly done. So we've got the objective side and the taking camera side all done. What are we going to do? So again, all we need to do is to set them on some linear system so that they can slide closer and farther away from one another. And that is how we focus the system. Anything that moves forward and backwards, and it can either be that this side moves or that the lens side moves, it doesn't change the fact that that will focus the system. 
everything will stay the same. For the prototype, I used this. This is a C-beam from the world of 3D printing and assembly. And the benefits are that it is extremely rigid and sturdy and easy to mount a number of things onto. A lot of you have asked, how do I mount this beam to a tripod? And right now I've got a clamp here. I'll, I'll get to this in a little bit more detail. Um, but basically, the general idea is that these beams have slots all over them into which you can insert small threaded nuts. And there's a variety of these nuts. I don't recommend the drop-in nut because they can easily twist out. Then there is the slide-in variety. These two are both slide-in variety nuts. This one's just a little plate, and this one is a thicker nut. Um, either of these work really well. I tend to use this type in my assembly. So this is a slide-in nut. I've got a link to it in the description. And the way it works is you literally just slide it in. And now you have an M5 threaded connection that can work to mount just about anything. On this assembly, I'm using four of them. And I will show you why in a moment. So let's slide in those four. There we go, we're good there. And then onto this rail, I'm gonna slide these gantries. So these gantries are made by the same people who make these rails. Uh, again, you can use any, or any linear movement system, but I'm gonna use these gantry plates. What I wanna do is take my objective side subassembly and mount it onto this plate. So I'm gonna do that with a couple more screws. I had to drill some of these holes out to do so, so you may need to do that depending on what system you buy and you're using, but they should work just fine regardless. Okay, so there we go. We've got the objective plate mounted to this gantry plate with bearings on it, and so now it will slide right into our system. There we go. So now we've got linear movement here. But I'm actually not going to use the linear movement on this side. I'm going to move my main gantry plate. You can use it either way, but the way I did it was to move the main gantry. So to keep this plate from moving, I'm going to use two of these threaded nuts that I put on the system and put some of the thumb screws included with my F0 camera through. So with those screws tightened, this won't move. So that way it's gonna stay where I want it to uh, and I can loosen these and move the lens if I need to. All right, next up, we're going to take the main gantry and a couple of holes on this gantry plate are threaded with M5 threads. So I am gonna use a couple more thumb screws and screw this intermediate assembly onto the gantry plate. So this is probably not the most secure connection. Uh, I think it could be a lot better, but you know, again, there's pros and cons to everything. The pro of this is that it's pretty easy to get mounted and moving. Okay, so now I have a system on a linear sliding plate that goes forward and back, great but I want one more thing, which is a way to lock it down. And that's why I put those two extra T-nuts in there. Those line up perfectly with a couple holes on this gantry plate. And I picked up these long M5 thumb screws on Amazon, and they're gonna go straight down into those nuts. And that way, if I don't want the system moving, it won't move. So I can loosen it and get this beautiful sliding movement again or I can tighten it down and everything stays where I want it to. Okay, I'm gonna leave the bellows off for now and I'm gonna show you how I mount this whole thing to a tripod. So as you saw before, we slide in those M5 nuts so that we can get a threaded connection. And what I threaded in was this plate. I'll leave a description in the link below as well. This grasps uh, a variety of different width dovetails, but I'm using it to grasp 
an ARRI standard dovetail. So this is the tripod plate that came with my tripod, a Vinton 250. It's a really beefy tripod. And then I screwed an ARRI standard dovetail onto it. I think this one's made by ProAim. It used to be an 18 inch dovetail and I cut it in half just to make it a little shorter. And then what happens is I mount this to the tripod and then this clamp grips it. So this is the rail that goes on this particular tripod. And we just torque it down there. So now this is ready for the final assembly. There we go. Okay, so I can torque this down. And now it's on the tripod and ready for use. So this is my F-Zero camera, pretty much as I use it, obviously without the bellows on. But uh, what are the pros and cons of using it this way? So the pros, again, is that this is a really rock solid, rigid system that'll give you really nice focus pulls and let you be really um, intricate with how you, how you take your shots. The drawback is that it's extremely heavy right, uh, compared to some other systems. If I tried to put this on like a little tiny carbon fiber slider, it would be a lot lighter overall, but it would be probably harder to get things to line up perfectly. Um, and it might be harder to get it onto a tripod, I'm not sure. This Vinton 250 is a really beefy tripod. This can balance up to like 70 pounds. Uh, of payload and most tripods aren't quite that strong. So with this system, I can, I can do a real easy, you know, video movement if I want to, uh, but that's not going to be the case for every version of this system. Uh, obviously I haven't mounted the camera yet and you can mount literally anything here that you want, as long as it has a field of view large enough to get this, uh, and doesn't have a crazy amount of distortion doing so, like barrel distortion, like a fisheye lens or something, then you'll get the same image, whether you shoot with a DSLR or a Hasselblad or a phase one, you know, it doesn't really matter uh, what you put back here, as long as it has fairly sufficient resolution. So that's about it for the basic assembly. Um, let me know if you have any questions about this, I'm happy to answer them. And uh, to all of you out there who are starting to put together your F-Zero cameras, uh, best of luck. Thank you so much for being part of this project, and I'll see you again next time.